Woman crashes. Young man meets young woman. Young man, young woman confused. Young man, young woman run from some people. See other people, see other people. Almost die, maybe don't die. Discover things, harmony. It was a great, it, it, there, there have been many iterations, but it was always an amazing action adventure. And also like gender politics and what happens if something happens to one group of people that doesn't happen to another, how does that affect people? How does that affect the dynamic of relationships within whatever community a group of people have created? So it's a really interesting on all sort of fronts. What's all this? Cryo chambers for horses. There's a horse in here? There were horses in here. That's how they all got here. It's interesting because we did the initial shoot and then we did some additional photography. The initial shoot was tricky in that I spent a lot of the time feeling confused as to what was going on. And Viola's confused, so it feels like it should work, but it was like trying to navigate how Viola and Todd work together. You know, it's a it's a tricky thing making relationships right when there were a hundred other things going on. So I, I always felt that Viola was a bit, not darker, but when I watched the film, I was surprised by the lightness with which Viola operates. And I think uh, the additional photography was actually really helpful because I think everyone had had a chance to figure out like, how the relationship was really gonna work. And then me and Tom knew each other a bit longer. So it was like easier for us to have more of like a repartee. But I'm afraid of her, right? Yeah. I think you're afraid of her that first second because you're like, whoa. And then that's gotta- And then just inquisitive. Inquisitive. So all of those things were actually really, really helpful to come back and tweak. And we had a couple new scenes. It's strange to see everything you're thinking. You no, know, it was strange for me too, not knowing what's going on in your head. Not knowing what you're thinking. I mean, I don't know, you might not like my dog or you want to hit me over the head with a rock or something. Why would I do that? You have the map. We did that in additional photography and everything just felt a bit lighter. So I think also the circumstances of how we shot was very helpful for that. But I do think for someone to be like doggedly on, you know, their own journey and also being totally naive about a place, I think that can lead to humour. What are you doing? But I was actually surprised by the by the lightness in the film, yeah. What are you doing? Taking a bath, why? In your clothes? Yeah. They stink as much as I do. Oh, that's... And it was nice, because I didn't want it to, even though it's a lot of it's pretty bleak for Viola, I didn't want it to feel like heavy, like this heavy, because ultimately it is an adventure you know, that's that's based on a novel for teenagers. So yeah, I'm happy that it came across a bit lighter. We'll leave in the morning. I'd rather stay with you, Todd. I'd rather be with you. Kiss me, Todd. Kiss me. Kiss me. No, wait, I didn't just say that. I'm sorry. Viola. I do think credit where credit is due with Doug in that he likes writing for people. So, uh, so the Viola that's presented in this film she makes decisions that like I would make. So in terms of that, it isn't such a stretch for me because I'm like, oh, to me, that totally makes sense. Like, I'm not like, I would have done that differently. And also because it became quite a collaborative experience, before we did the additional photography, I was sent the script by Doug and me and Doug had been talking quite a lot. And I never really had that on a film. Like it was always collaborative, but never, I had never been sent a script and asked my opinion. And so I had given my thoughts and I had a really good conversation with like various people. Um, and I just said, look, from my point of view, this is what I think would be cool. Like, this is what I think might work. So it was a pretty amazing thing to be like, ask my opinion when I'm like, I don't know, 26, 27, um, in a way like that. So I was already sort of in a mindset because the conversation had been ongoing. They're aliens. <clears throat> Trying to wipe us out. Aren't we the aliens? What does that mean? They're native, that means we're the aliens. 
a big sort of motif for Viola is, you know, her parents wanting a better life for her and she's trying to like fulfill these things. And I think for anyone that's moved countries or culturally is in a totally different place than, than they were when they were 10. And what that means for you growing up, hopefully that feels like a really uplifting, uplifting emotional arc to see someone recalibrating their expectation versus their reality and how they are going to make the best of, of, of it, even if it isn't what they thought it would be. In terms of now and how the noise causes an emotional dystopia, I think probably parallels with social media and things like that and people quickly putting something out into the world without perhaps thinking of the repercussions. I'm not gonna hurt you. Billy sent me. I'll get the girl. Bring it to practice. In Chaos Walking, the noise is spontaneous. You can't control it except for one character who contains it in quite a spooky way. But I guess it, it might be resonant in that way because of now quick news and quick information and something being out there and being unable to take it back and the way people perceive you. But I feel like there's a there's an interesting thing with overload of information at the moment and overload of sort of sharing uh, in a way. Barn. Barn. Chaos Walking does hopefully serve a lot of fans. It's this sort of big amazing action adventure with a real heart asking a lot of moral questions and not necessarily giving the audience an answer but letting the audience decide along with the characters like how they feel about what's going on. Hey. Viola, she's here. Why all this here? Where else would I be? 